Alright, so at this point, the app can still be polished and added more content. Remember last time we said the concept of MVP, minimal viable product. What, when is the point when your project, your product, your app, is minimally viable? When is it at the point that it works enough that it might be released, version 1, or version 0 0.9, whatever we want to call it, what's the point where we can start to release it to the public? And I think at this point we are, because we've got uh, the login and log out system, we've got a way to save information, retrieve it, edit it, delete it. We've got all of those basic ideas of what a minimal viable product is. And if you've been working on your version, well, you've also got colors, you've also got graphics and text. So if you're not fully there, there's still time to uh, smooth those rough edges out. But I think we're at a point that functionally and visually, the project is pretty close to being finished. The goal will be that we will wrap version 1 today and then start talking about what do we need to do to publish our project. We're going to create an actual app store listing and all of that stuff. Then we're going to talk about marketing, getting uh, attention for your app, etc. And then version 2, we're going to return to the app and change a few more things, add a few more things and see the process of releasing a version 2. Because most apps, they're never done. Even big apps that you might see, you know, Facebook, if you use that, or Instagram, or Twitter, all of those apps that you use on a regular basis, they constantly put out uh, new versions. It's never really done. They add new features, or they fix bugs. They get feedback, and they make improvements. So we'll talk about that as well, releasing a version 2. So I've got a, um, a direct link to the documentation where we're, we're going to read uh, how to uh, polish up our app and, and finish it up. Uh, I'm going to put that in the network folder right now, but I'm also going to show you how to get to it the long way, and it is a long way. Uh, but in the MAD3 folder, in the network folder, I'm going to add a brand new file, publishing to the App Store. You can copy that file and it's got a direct link. But I'm also going to get to that screen directly from the starting point. Go ahead and open up your web browser. We'll go to visualstudio.com. I'll show you how to, th how to get to it here. Now, on the previous handouts that I've also given you, part one and part two, there uh, specifically part two, there have been links at the bottom of many of the handouts that said further reading. How many of you have read further? Very few people. Okay, minus 10 points for everyone. <laughs> so those further readings are more of the documentation of, of Visual Studio. So where we're going to go to right now is in one of the handouts that I gave a while ago, but now it's time to actually look at it and it's actually time to uh, put it into play put it into play. So at visualstudio.com, our first spot that we go to is right over here. Visual Studio IDE, learn more. Let's click on learn more right here. So from visualstudio.com, we'll go to learn more. Scrolling down, there's a lot of information about what you can do with Visual Studio. Go down, keep going, keep going. What would you like to build? Mobile apps. So scroll down to find this section, mobile apps. Click on mobile apps. There's a lot more info, but we want to go to the documentation right here. So again, that, uh, that file that's in the network folder takes you directly where we want to go, but I'm showing you this way as well because, again, this stuff would be recommended for you to read. 
So documentation. We have one more thing to click on here. We're working with JavaScript. Here's the other ways that it can be done. So there's documentation for you to read there if you go those routes. But we're on the JavaScript route, so click on that. And here we go. This is the documentation ultimately on the side here. I think we've looked at this briefly a while ago, and these links have been here or have been in the handouts uh, throughout the class. If you hadn't quite explored them, they've, they've been there and more to look at. And so you've got the whole process over here. We're going to look at publishing. So on the left table of contents, let's open publishing publish to a store. This screen is the link that is in the network folder right there. So if you lose track of where to go on the website, here's the direct link. I'm going to do an overview of what this documentation is and then we will actually do it. Have you noticed more and more websites, more and more blogs, and documentation nowadays give you like a length of time to read? So I see that more and more on people's blogs and instructional tutorials that it says, this is a two minute read, this is a five minute read. That's, I think, kind of like a modern way for websites to show the difficulty of something. If it only takes two minutes to read it, you can probably accomplish something pretty quickly. Well, uh, this one's uh, 17 minutes to read, if you read it from start to, to finish, because it is a lot to, to read and to do. Because this covers how to set yourself up to publish your app for Android and iOS and Windows. So it covers all of the three big platforms. We're going to focus on Android first. So it goes on to introduce you about, okay, we've been deploying to a simulator or to devices, but now what we've got to do is set ourselves up to publish to a real app store. Before you can build your app for deployment to any device through a public app store, you must first configure Visual Studio with the info it needs to complete the process in packaging and signing. So we've been working with a version of this project that is in debug mode. We've been developing it, we've been working on it, it's not ready for the public yet. That's why we can open uh, Google Chrome and do the remote debugging and such because it's in debug mode. We need to change the project, we need to set it to release mode, and we also need to sign it. We need to use our credentials as a developer to say this is our app, it's finished, it's ready to go to the App Store. There's going to be a section for the three big app stores to, to follow, and we'll do Android first. Scrolling down, step one right here, modify application settings. Most of these are done. We did this a while ago, but we will look at this screen also one more time. I said early on when we got into Visual Studio for the first time last month, we look at the config file oftentimes a couple of times when we first create the project to set up the basics of it and then when we're going to publish so that we can check that everything is set properly. So let's go back to our config XML file in Visual Studio. We'll, take a, we'll, we'll give it a once over glance to see that all of these screens look like they're supposed to. So back to Visual Studio, open your config XML and basically under tool set we don't need to change anything here this is informational under common well if you've been using copies of my code most likely yours has a package name that is exactly the same as mine which you don't want if you are going to publish this to a real app store and you use a package name that someone else already has yours will be rejected so if you, one of the last assessments of this class is that I will check that you have uploaded to an app store. 
you're not going to be able to upload to the app store it'll reject it and you might wonder why 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 won't they take my app it's amazing they don't but they don't want it well it's the package name if i upload mine first com.smithy.cbdb yours will be rejected right away cuz that's not your package id so change your package name right here to com.yourlastname dot cbdb so anything besides what I'm gonna write don't write exactly what I'm writing you're falling into the exact same trap a moment that I said a moment ago your package ID must be different than mine a while ago when we were playing with this I apparently left version 99 minor version 2 and October 10th this is not wrong or anything but you should set this properly version 1 dot one dot 2017 11 14 and again if you're using if you've been using my code here is the name of your developer uh, studio or your company whatever you want to call it you probably are not smithy apps LLC you are whatever you want to be so putting a name here of, of you as the developer is what you want to do and it could simply be your name you know the author your name that's fine or if you do want to create a sort of real company you can you can make this up however you want any name is valid here really I guess unless it's vulgar but any name here will be fine and they'll accept it because later on in the documentation, what will make you official, quote unquote, is your signing certificate, your developer certificate that shows I'm a real developer. We'll do that in a bit. These other items here should be the same as before. Okay, description, the only app you'll need to keep. Okay, you can leave that if you want or change it. I would recommend to change it. Uh, the description definitely when we publish it and we create the store listing you will want your own unique verbiage to hype your app to entice people to download it present uh, orientation portrait keep that of course full screen no domain access all of that else is fine you can click save the config file Does that make sense? Any questions on this common screen? On the documentation, again, it reminds you what each of those little boxes are, what I just said. So, okay, we looked at all of that. Great. Moving on. Um, plugins. Let's look at installed. Install here will show you all of the plugins that have been previously installed in this app, and you only want to keep the ones that are that are relevant, because it's very easy to go in and add. Okay, let me add the battery plugin, and let me add the uh, uh, contacts plugin to read the person's contacts. Maybe you're adding these plugins to a project to experiment with the plugins, and then okay, great, but you're not actually using. The, the plugin. Well, these are permissions. And when someone is going to download your, your app from the App Store, it says, this app would like to access the camera, the microphone, your contacts, your location. And perhaps for our kind of app, it might scare people. Why is this app trying to access my contacts on my device? Why is this app trying to access the microphone of my device? Is it going to spy on me? So installed should only have the ones that the app really uses. And there were a couple that were added rather automatically. Uh, promise, leave that one alone. That is just uh, for modern uh, JavaScript ES6 parlance. Just promise, leave that one alone, don't worry. Whitelist, leave that one alone too. These are a list of uh, approved sites to link to. Splash screen, obviously we want it because we get that cool little splash screen to load up when our project loads up, right? So we'll leave splash screen. 
social sharing, of course, will leave because we we have that ability to send a. Um, that's related to sending an email, and then later on, we're going to also add actual social media sharing a little bit later. Console, we're still going to do a version two eventually, and I want console output, so that one's okay. Camera, we take a photo of the comic, don't we? And barcode, we scan the barcode. So all the ones I have here should be the ones we want to keep. And unless you do something extra, like maybe you did figure out a cool use for the device motion, well, yeah, keep that one if you're using it. But if you're not using a plugin, I would remove it to not scare people into thinking, why is this app going to spy on me? Even though I believe you're not going to spy on anyone. So we don't have to change anything here. We're going to jump over to Android, and we can look at Windows and iOS a little later once we publish to those stores a little later. But on the documentation, Android here reminds you what's this all about. Uh, version code, minimum API, and all of that. So this is version one of the code that we're going to publish to the App Store. When we publish a next version to the App Store, it'll be version two. This is specifically to the Google Play Store. This doesn't affect if we're publishing to the iTunes Store, which is over in iOS. But if I release a version, oh, I misspelled something. It wasn't a big change, but I definitely want to upload a new version. I would still change this to version 2 and probably change common to, you know, 1.2. You know, when I realize it, oh, it's on the 15th. These numbers are rather arbitrary. They can be anything. So I could do this. Whoops, I had a misspelling. I'm going to upload version 2015 right here, or 20, uh, 17, 11, 15. But I would keep the rest the same, sure. But I definitely have to then increment this to 2. Let's keep that on 1. And then the rest about the version of our, uh, of our Android operating system that we're targeting, this is fine. Keep running, this is fine, and all of this is fine. We don't really need to change anything here. Save. So the documentation, uh, you should read that a little bit deeper, uh, just to kind of understand these fields a little bit more. Scrolling down further. Okay, generate a private certificate. This is the part where this is something brand new. We've looked at this stuff here before. I'm going to close the config file. And now this is something completely new. When running Android apps using the Android SDK in Visual Studio, apps are signed with a debug certificate. Before you can sign the app for development via other means, you must use a signing certificate for your company, your organization. If you already have one, skip forward. How many of you do have a JavaScript self-signed Android certificate? Raise your hand. Oh, we're surprised no one. So we're going to create one right now. This is, a, this is a special file that certifies, I'm a developer. This is my app. I'm the official representative of this app. When I upload it to the App Store, I'm the one uploading it. This is an, a legitimate app. So scrolling down, the way we do this is with a little bit of command prompt action. We're going to type a couple of commands in the command prompt to create this special file. This file requ uh, requires Java. We have Java in, uh, installed because when we install Visual Studio, it comes with Java. So in general, we're going to open the command prompt. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We're going to navigate to the Java folder, and we're going to type a command like this. So that will give us a file eventually, which we then use in Visual Studio to say, this is us, this is our certificate, this is our official app, let's publish for real. OK, so the way we actually do it. Let's go to your Start menu and type Command. Uh, 
Uh, I think to be safe, it, noted, it notes here about a regular command prompt and an administrator command prompt. I think it's safer to do this in administrator mode. So once you search for command, you should see command prompt, right click it, and select run as administrator. So search command, right click command prompt, run as administrator. So we get here the command prompt. It says we're an administrator. If it doesn't say admin an administrator, try again. It should say administrator. OK, so we open the command prompt. It says, if your, pa if your system is configured with the Java SDK bin folder in the path, then just skip to the next step. To confirm that this is set up in the command prompt here, type Java C. Most likely, you will get the response not recognized. That simply means that when Visual Studio was installed, it did not put the Java program in the, in the path where we can easily access it in the command prompt. That's OK. That means we're going to need to move, we're going to need to navigate to the folder where Java is installed on this computer before we can run this command. So if you've never used the command prompt, yes, it's a big culture shock. What am I looking at? How does this work? Well, this is saying you're currently on the C drive in the users folder in the lab folder, something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on the instructor folder because I'm in an instructor computer. Well, let's type here cd space backslash. Now that is a backslash, not a slash. Remember, a slash is a forward slash. HTTP colon slash slash. No, this is a backslash. Backslash is above the Enter key. CD backslash. Press Enter. CD space backslash. Enter. CD is change directory. <coughs> We've moved from one folder into another folder. The root folder, the C drive. Type dir to see a directory, a listing of all of the folders on the C drive. And this says, OK, on your C drive, you've got these folders. I'm on my C drive. If I want to look at my flash drive, my flash drive is the F drive. Yours probably also. So type here F colon enter. It switches me to the to the F drive. I want to see what's on my F drive. Now how do I see what's in a folder? DIR, directory. And those are the folders I expect on my flash drive. OK, so if I type F colon to jump to my F drive, I want to go back to the C drive. How do you think you do that? C colon. CD is for changing directories, but simply the drive letter is to change drives. C drive, F drive. So let's go back to C colon, enter back to the C drive. So obviously, if you haven't used the command prompt, it's very different, because I'm used to opening a window, and double-clicking a file, and looking at my tree over here, and clicking something else. Well, in the old days, when dinosaurs ruled the Earth, and we had the command prompt, this is how we navigated a computer. We typed the command CD to change directory, or the drive letter, A drive, B drive, C drive, whatever. And we need to use this a little bit, to use the Java key tool to generate a developer certificate. There's probably a pretty interface app version that we don't have installed that will do this. But it's not so bad, because the instructions here tell us exactly what to do. And I'm guiding us. So we're on the C drive. We need to find the Java folder. And it says here, probably in your C drive, 
program files folder, Java folder, you'll have your Java app. So what we'll do here is to confirm if you type dir on the C drive, dir, I see, OK, I've got a folder right there. I've got a directory, program file. We need to type the name of a folder exactly, because if I was trying to do CD users and I misspelled it, obviously it will not go to the right folder. Capitalization doesn't really matter, but I want to go to CD space program files, and here's a tip. As you start typing a long file name, you can press tab on the keyboard to have it type the rest. Because technically, we should type any files, or folders that is, with a space, we should type it in quotes. Because technically, if we're typing a command, space, something, space, it might think you're trying to type more than one command. So putting it in quotes will say, no, we're going to change directory into this directory with a space, in quotes. So if you don't remember to type that, and you're typing CD program files, it may or may not take you to the folder, but it'll be safer to CD space programs and then tab, so it types the rest for you. Now let's say I, instead I accidentally went into the program files x86. That's a different folder. Let's say I went into the wrong folder. I need to back up one level. You saw a moment ago here, perhaps. I'm in the wrong folder. I need to back up. CD space dot dot is a way to back up on one folder level. You don't need to do that right now. I'm just showing you that I went into the wrong folder, and I need to back up. We need to CD into program files. DIR there gives you a list of all of the programs installed, and one of them is Java. CD space Java. I'm going to go into the Java folder. So this is telling you you're on the C drive. Program files folder, Java folder. The command we need to type in a little bit has to be executed in the right folder. If you type it anywhere else, you know, if I go back to the root and I type key tool, it'll say, I don't know what key tool is. What program do you mean? So this is why we need to be in a specific folder. documentation further says, OK, inside the Java folder, you'll have some version of Java. They've got 8.0.1.11. And we've got uh, 131. Uh, JDK 1.8.0.1.12. Actually, that's the one, JDK, not JRE. Very common mistake here. We want JDK folder, not JRE. Java Development Kit, not Java Runtime Environment. So in our case, obviously the document, obviously our case is different than the documentation. If you try to type exactly what the documentation says, you will get an error. We don't have a folder called 111. And it'll simply tell you that. So as you further create apps, and come back to the documentation, obviously, you have to think one step outside the box. I've got version 118 installed. So obviously, you type version 118. In our case, 1112. And finally, in a folder called bin for binaries, I'm in the right place now. Now, try, now type Java C. And that'll give you some output saying, great, Java is installed, and here are a variety of commands we can use. If you know how to set the path in Windows or the Mac, you can set it so that you don't have to go to that specific folder to execute Java commands. You need to go look up online, how do I set my Windows path? And it'll tell you there how to add this folder to your path.
so that from anywhere in the command prompt you can type these commands and it'll work but we have to go into this folder manually to run the commands because this app exists in this folder All right, so all of that was step two, to get to the right place. Step three, in the command prompt, we're going to type this. So let me break down what it says, and then we'll type it. We're going to use a we're going to use a program called KeyTool. In that folder, if you dir, you will see a file called KeyTool.exe. It's an app. It's a program. We're going to have dash gen key pair. We're going to generate a key pair. We're going to generate a special file that designates you as the app developer dash v for verbose meaning simply give me a lot of output so I can see any errors that might happen we're gonna create a file key store and in the example here is file path to my key store dot key store we're going to create a file anywhere we want dot Store with any name dot keystore. It's a special file that is encrypted. You can't really open it in Notepad, plus plus, or Visual Studio to look at it. It's a special encrypted file. This is a special file that we will need to keep and store and back up. This file, if you're doing this class for class purposes, you can make this up and call it test keystore. But if eventually you will publish real apps to the real app stores, specifically first the Android app store, this key store file is very important because you're going to need to use it every time you upload a new version of your real app or a brand new app in the future. These are your credentials. It's like your driver's license or your passport or something. You need to back up this file and make a backup of the backup and put it on Dropbox or something because if you lose that file you have to create a new one and then suddenly you're a new developer and that's going to confuse the app stores well a key store file can have various aliases or sort of like users it's basically like this it's like a real uh, key chain like this the first command dash key store is to create a key chain and then to create individual keys for individual people it's an, it's an individual key. So the next part here is alias. I'm going to create an actual key for, for a user to use for certain purposes. I'm going to recommend when we do this in a moment, we will put our last name dot key store. And the alias will be your last name. And then some other stuff here. Dash key alg dash key algorithm. We're using the RSA algorithm. It's just the way it's encrypted, just the way you do it. The size of the encryption key, 2 kilobytes. That's just the way it is there. And then validity, 10,000 days, I believe. So that's about 30 years. You're going to have this, va this file is going to be valid, and you're going to be a developer for the next 30 years, is basically what that's saying. Because the thing is, uh, for some reason, Google wants developers to have at least a key that's valid, have a key that's valid for at least 25 years. 10,000 days rounds up to about 30 years or something. That can be changed, but I wouldn't. So we need this command. We need to type this command in the command prompt. Uh, I think we can copy it right there and right click and paste. Don't do Control V, that'll give you a weird escape character you'll want to right click and paste and we're going to need to change things here it's the command prompt so you will not be able to click right here you will not be able to click here to change something here you have to use the arrow keys on the keyboard on the keyboard you have to use the left arrow key to move to the spot that needs to be changed So we need to change dash key store where are we saving the file and we need to change dash alias what's the user in the key store using the arrow keys after you paste you need to move I would go to where it says file path and just delete that So you should be able to write 
Yes, in the command prompt, you should be able to right click and get the pop up paste. Okay, so what we need here, it had key store and a temporary name here. What we can do is type F colon backslash. So we're about to save this file to your F drive. If you don't have an F drive, a flash drive, just don't put anything there and it'll be saved into this folder. I'll show you how to retrieve it in a moment. F colon flash drive, your last name dot key store. Now it gets cut off here. I can't show the whole thing at once. Sorry about that. But it's uh, F colon backslash your last name dot key store. Or the name of the company that you used? Or? Yeah. I would use the short. I would just use a short name as possible, no spaces, because then these spaces matter and they could cause problems. So if it is a company like you know Victor Apps, run it as one word together. You could use underscores if you want, but again, if you're typing all of this, it's just best to have the easiest thing as possible. If you don't have a flash drive. You don't have to specify a flash drive. This will get saved to this folder. And this is a folder that you can open in a Windows Explorer. So I'm going to put it on the root level of my flash drive. I'm not going to do anything fancy by trying to put it in a subfolder of a subfolder on my flash drive. You could, but you have to type it exactly right or it won't work. So simply F colon backslash. And then you move your you move the cursor with the arrow keys over to my alias, delete that. And again your last name or the name of your company, no spaces. I would recommend to have the alias named as the same file name whatever dot key store, the whatever part, use it as the alias. For more security, you can have the alias be one thing, and then the key store file name be something else. That's more secure, because if someone figures out the password to the, to the key store, there's still another password that's required. This is very secure. It's going to ask you for two passwords in a moment. It's going to ask you for a password to lock the whole file, and then it's going to ask you for a password to lock this alias, this user. And obviously, it's very much more convenient to have the same alias and key store name and the same password for both. More convenient, but less secure. More secure is to have a different alias and a different file name and a different password and a different password. But then if you lose one, you're in big trouble because you can't get into it without knowing these passwords. Besides this, leave the rest alone. The key algorithm, the key size, the validity that we're creating a genera uh, that we're generating a key. You can then press enter. Enter key store password. It's going to ask for a password for the actual file. And you will not get any feedback that you're typing anything. So I already typed two letter A's. Nothing is there. Backspace that. Nothing will, will give you feedback that you've typed a password. So you'll have to look at the keyboard or, or know what you're typing. You need a password here. Press Enter re-enter password. So the same password, type it in again. Hopefully you spelled it right the first time. If you didn't, it'll tell you passwords don't match. It is tricky that you cannot see what you're typing. That's high security there. Quick reminder to everyone, if you haven't quite muted your devices yet, please take a moment to mute your devices. It's going to ask us a bunch of information here which is noted in the documentation. 
The Java key tool app will launch and prompt you for a series of values. It needs to create a key store and generate the pair. So it's going to ask us all of this stuff. What is your first and last name? What is the name of your organizational unit? Also known as like your job title. You can put nothing, leave it empty. You can put developer. You can put it hardcore programmer, whatever you want. What is the name of your organization, your company? Probably the same as your key, your key store file. What is the name of your city, your, your state, uh, two-letter country code, US? And then it'll confirm everything you've typed, so if you misspelled something, you can come back to fix it. So it's first asking me, OK, what's your first and last name? Enter. What's the name of your organizational unit? I'll put developer. Job title, developer. If you don't put anything, it'll automatically put unknown. This is going to be the default. Enter. Name of your organization. What did I call this fake company again? Kaiju apps or something? Kaiju mobile apps. Don't steal my idea. Enter. What is the name of your city or locality? San Diego, or whatever you'd like. State, CA. California. Two letter country code, US. This is what I typed a moment ago. First and last name looks good. Organizational unit, fine. Organization, fine, etc. All of it looks good. If something's wrong, um, if you press enter, it assumes no. So it'll go back again to do the whole thing again. If you type yes, you confirm that what you type here is correct. And I would confirm this because it's very difficult to change this once it's been set up. That's the point. This is a special key. It should not be very easily editable and hackable. This is your credential. This is like your driver's license, like your passport, something important to identify you. So if you make a mistake now, it's going to be very difficult to fix later. And perhaps, just for the purposes of the class, it might be a good idea, just make this up. That's fine. I'm completely making it up, and it'll be valid for me to use and to demo to you. But eventually, if you do want to publish a real app, don't even, you're not even considering this class. If you want to publish a real app, you want to set this up for real. For this class, you can make it up completely. And you can publish completely you can publish to the App Store with a completely fake account. That's fine. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to make up a person, create an app account, and publish an app. Completely fake. And that's fine for this class. That's, as, that's all that I really need for you to be graded eventually when we do that. So you can decide if you want this real or not. And if you made a mistake in the first minute, The very first one up here? Yeah. Uh, check your spelling, and I'll check yours in just a moment. If it's giving you some sort of error, no, it just, I didn't, I think there's a dot key store in it. It's hard to see on the screen. Yes, yes at the very so end here. That, so. Whatever dot key store. Yep, yeah. that's I what you'll make. The dot key store part. Yeah. That's okay. It'll give you a file without an extension. You know, if you put just simply Martin, it'll give you Martin without dot key store. And that's fine. You can add that dot key store in Windows Explorer. So I'm going to type yes. This looks fine here. Press enter. So it says it's generating a 2048-bit RSA key. And then here, uh, OK, now enter a password for the alias. So there's the user in this key store. It's this one key in the keychain. The first password to was unlock the keychain. The second password is to unlock this one key. You can do the exact same password as before to make it easy, or a different one for more security. Are these passwords only known to you? Yes. Yes. You, will, you won't give these passwords out anywhere, not even to the app stores. These are only known to you. So again, if you mistype it, it'll tell you they don't match. Try again. Make sure your passwords 
make sure the ones you're typing right now match. They don't have to match your first password from the first step. Eventually, storing your file on your F drive. If I didn't have an F drive, if I didn't have an F drive when I did this part here, I'm just saving it in the same folder as my Java app. So this file, I'll do it one more time. I have a copy on my flash drive, yes. But here, if I didn't say, if I didn't specify my flash drive, it's going to get saved into the bin folder of your Java folder. So if we do it one more time, it'll ask for all of this again. Password is too short. I'll just uh, make this all up again here. Whatever, just completely fake. All of that gets made up. I'm showing here that I can create as many of these as I want, but each one is different. Each one has its own built-in encrypted data. This file is completely different than the one I saved on my flash drive. So this is why I'm saying that if you're doing this for real, this file that you're creating, keep it, back it up, back up the backup, put it in a cloud drive, because if you lose this, you'll have to recreate it, and then suddenly you're a different developer. But if you saved this to your flash drive, on my flash drive, it's right there. If you didn't save it to the flash drive, it's going to be in your C drive, program files, Java, JDK 11.12, bin. It's right there. created it at exactly 7 o'clock. Whatever this thing is called, really, it doesn't really matter. The documentation recommends key store so that it's obvious that it's a key store. But if you had saved your file as, you know, my file dot key, that's fine. If you saved it with nothing, that's fine. Key store. Commonly, I also see um, JKS, Java, Java, Java key store file. Key store, according to the documentation. Anyway, I've got a copy of it on my flash drive. Right there. All of that accomplished. Step three. There are links throughout this documentation to read even more, I would, uh, to kind of learn even more about all of this. So that was sub-step three of super-step two. Now I'm on super-step three, sub-step one. Now that you have a key store and a signing certificate, that file, you must configure your project to use them. In Visual Studio, in Solution Explorer, expand the project folder and double click on the project's build.json file. Back on Visual Studio, build.json. That file was always there, but it, it never had any use for us until now. These are the settings that we need to set up for building our project as a real app. It's JSON, so it should look a little familiar. It's got the open and close curly brackets for the whole thing. It's got a key and values. We're publishing for Android, so therefore there is an Android property. Once we set it up for iOS, we'll have here comma iOS plus its own uh, properties and values. For Android, we're going to create a release-ready version. Currently, we're in debug. We want to create a release-ready for the whole public. 
we need to specify where the key store goes, where the key store is at. You can type your password here, your alias, your password for your alias, key store type, I think we can leave empty. So for convenience, you know, you're, you're typing the name of your key store. I'll fix that in a moment. For convenience, you can type your password here. Obviously, if I type my password here, everyone will see it, and it will be recorded. But I'm not going to type a password here. And actually, if you don't type a password, it will pop up and prompt you to, to plug in your password. So what I'm saying here for security, if you put your password here, and somehow you lose your file, somehow you leave it here on the desktop, and someone says, what's this app? And they look inside this file, you gave them your password. So it's OK to type your path to your key store and leave the stored password empty, because it will then pop up, Visual Studio will eventually pop up to ask you, what's your password? And it won't be stored there in plain text. So obviously, you're typing here what makes sense for you. On my F drive, I've got my file. I'm going to omit my password so that it prompts me. My alias is the actual um, key in the key store, which I recommended to be the same as the key store file name. Password on that one you can leave alone also. Now it seems to have a double backslash on that. I'm going to type that in just to be safe, I guess, for the escape character. So F colon double backslash. Key story, I think we can leave that alone. The documentation doesn't say to add anything there, so we can leave that as is. If, you're, if you mistyped something or the path is wrong, it'll tell you once we try to build. So it'll give us some feedback in a little bit. And I'll leave my, my passwords empty so that it prompts me. It's a little more secure that way. Step super step four, sub step one. The final step involves creating a release build for your app. So I'm going to save this build file and close it. And do you notice all of this time at the top we've been targeting Android for debug? Right here. We've been targeting Android debug. We're going to leave it on Android and select release. This is going to be the final version, for the moment, of this app. This will be a version of the app that is accepted by the app stores. If we try to upload the debug version, it will reject it. Choose Android, choose release, choose one of the Android emulators or physical device. You can leave it on the simulator, sure, I'll put it on a device. OK, actually, it says, do not select one of the simulated browser options. They don't generate native apps binaries. Only use Android emulator, which we don't have, or device. If you don't have a device, you can borrow one in the break in just a moment. I'll take a break soon. That's going to go to the device, to a real device, Android release ready version. Build menu, build solution. So 
In the build menu, select build solution. This creates a release build of the app, a file with an APK file extension. This is the file that you'll upload to the App Store. It's buried in one of the folders, I'll show you where, or it tells you right there. But this is then going to process as usual. It's going to have a slightly different output here. And then it's going to pop up, in my case, with a very, uh, it's going to pop up with a, with a little screen that then asks for a password. I'm going to type my password in there two times. That'll ask. See right here, it's saying, if you see right there, it's reading the build file. It found my key store. If you didn't find your key store, it'll tell you. Um, OK, here it's asking for uh, here it's asking for my password, where here it will be obfuscated. So I will type my password here. That's the one for the whole file, the key store. I click OK. Then it asks for the actual key of the alias. I use the same one twice, just for, for it to be easy for me. It'll then continue on its way. The output here will, will be very similar as before, but one final message at the end. As this is processing, it then says, OK, when the build completes, look for the APK file. You'll find it in your project's bin Android release folder. When uploading the app to the App Store, be sure to select that file. It does not contain the keyword or the word unaligned in the file, meaning it's not compressed. So we'll see in a moment, in your folder, you're going to get the release-ready version of your app and an unaligned, uncompressed version that we don't want. I'll show that in a moment. So all of this while, when you've been working on your project, it has been creating the the actual Android file, which is a .apk, an Android package file. It has been creating a file, but it was not App Store ready. Technically, you could have been sending that APK file to your friends to test it. But very technically, they would have struggled because they would have needed to go to their device, go to developer mode, turn on side loading, USB debugging, and all of that. That'll scare them. But if you have tech-savvy friends, this is one way that we can start this debugging, or beta testing, that is, giving them copies of our APK file. And if they know how to side load an app, they can put it on their device without going through a real app store. I'll we'll touch on that in a moment. What's happening here is that eventually, so this says, took two minutes, etc., etc. built the following on my F drive, in my folder, CBDB, in platforms, Android, build, outputs, APK. I get a file called android-release.apk. So we can see this. If yours built, you can go to your flash drive. You go to the folder of your project. CBDB folder. Bin folder. Or sorry, platforms folder. Platform folder, Android folder. Build folder. Outputs. APK. The debug version is there. When I started the class and I built my first debug version, there's those debug versions. And then the one from right now, 7.12, there's the release version. That's the, the final executable real app version of our project, executable on an Android device, of course. But that's our, that's our file of our app. It's about 2 megabytes. So our, our whole folder 
just out of curiosity, the whole CBDB folder up to today, oh, it's 128 megabytes. All of the uncompressed code, all of the plugins and everything. But the actual app, the final uploadable app, is simply 2 megabytes. So compressed really well. Yes? It knows uh, it's all compressed together. It doesn't, it doesn't have any extra ancillary files that you also have to upload. Everything is compressed into this one file. And it knows to do that simply because now that we're in the build uh, release, it knows to put everything together into one file compressed. Yes? We'll do a, a break in just a moment to check errors. But uh, to, to wrap up this idea here, at this point, you have a release version of your app all ready to be distributed to Google Play, App Store, and other app stores. So if it did work and you did get your final APK file, I'm going to copy this APK file to the root of my flash drive. That's my final app. I don't want to have to go back into this folder to find it again. And remember, the documentation tells you where to go look. But I'm going to copy that or move it. I'm going to copy it to the top level of my flash drive right here. And I will also name it something more memorable. I may be working on more than one app. Android release.apk, I'm going to lose track. Which app is this? So once I've copied it to the root level of my flash drive, I will call it CBDB dash one. It's version one. It's you know version code one of my project, CBDB project. That's what we will eventually upload to the app stores. All of this was how to do it for Android. Next, how to do it for iOS. And next, how to do this for Windows. So if we want to have our project deployed to all of the big operating systems, it's all here. We're going to focus on Android at the moment. We're going to take our first break. If it worked, raise your hand. Who did it work for? Raise your hand. OK, great. Take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You're an official app developer, Android app developer. If it didn't quite work, call me over. We'll take our break, and we'll figure out what happened. <laughs>